So for people who uh, are unaware, what is a smart city? Uh, a smart city is a city that leverages sensors, data, algorithms uh, to address urban challenges and improve quality of life for the residents. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's a it's a really a really pertinent thing right now, and we really wanted to talk about that in like uh, in conversation with climate change. Yeah, and I think it's um, I think there there are two topics that are interrelated, and there's there's a lot of overlap between them. Um, and some things I think are happening today, and I think there's a lot more that we'll see happening uh, in the future. The future. <laughs> okay. Um, so how do you think climate change is going to affect city planning? So um, I think it's a big question um, in terms of, uh, you know, so one of the issues is that um, cities were uh, for a long time, built near coasts and major waterways. Um, mm -hmm. 150 years ago, it was pretty difficult to move goods around except via water. And so today it's different. We have trains and airplanes and, and trucks to move, to move goods around. But what we're dealing with is a lot of cities that have grown up around, um, around waters, around coasts. And so if you think about issues like sea level rise, um, a lot of cities are going to be um, pretty dramatically impacted by that. Um, even in the United States, you can think about um, like 40 to 50 percent of the population um, living near a coast. And so um, there's a potential for a big impact. And so um, as you think about what's going to happen, um, you think about sort of if there's sea level rise, um, we're likely going to see a lot of people displaced. Um, where um, people are going to have to choose what they're going to do. And so um, some people may um, consider moving to more inland cities. Um, and at a more micro scale, you can see um, people choosing to just move to higher ground. Um, and I think mm. issues that cities are going to have to contend with going forward is um, differences in elevation even within a city where certain areas are going to be more likely to be um, impacted by, by, by inundation, more likely to be flooded. And um, we might see cities having to deal with issues of property values um, changing over time. And so there's a lot going on there. And I think one of the big issues that underlies a lot of this is the socioeconomics of it. Um, specifically, who are the people that are going to be impacted by climate change? Um, and cities are going to have to face choices about how they choose to protect the city, what, what neighborhoods possibly get levies and what neighborhoods are uh, potentially abandoned because they're too dangerous for people to live. Yeah. And it's not going to be, I don't expect it to be coincidental on which neighborhoods are the ones that may be left to go underwater and mm. those that are protected. And so I, so there's a lot of, lot of interrelated issues. And so, Cities are going to have to do the inland cities are going to have to deal with new population coming in. These are cities that already have their own challenges that they're dealing with. And the additional pressure on them from from new residents is going to be a big deal. The coastal cities themselves are going to have to deal with the um, sort of the micro scale issues, neighborhood to neighborhood issues about about where where inundation is more or less likely going to happen. And that's and these are, of course, you know, in a Florida context where sea level rise is kind of the. The, the big issue. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Um, check out our, our link down to our iTunes in the uh, description below. We all know you use iTunes. So. I hope you use iTunes because that's where it's going to be. That's where it is, so use it. Below. <laughs>